So what if you had something like negative 6 times 10x? Now notice I erased the previous part of the uh, board where we had the rules listed because ultimately you're going to have to memorize them anyway. So the rule for multiplication is when the signs match, you get a positive answer. If they're both positive, they're both negative, you always get a positive result. But if the signs are different from one another, if they're opposite, then you always get a negative answer. And in this case, you have negative 6 times a positive 10x. Now, this 10x really means 10 times x. We don't know what x is. It's not a number. And even though this section says multiplying real numbers, now you, by now you should know in algebra that this x is just, it's just a placeholder for some unknown value. So you carry the x along for the ride. So in this case, since the signs are opposite of one another, negative and positive, the answer will be negative. And when you multiply things like this, you can't do anything with the x, but you can certainly multiply the numbers together. 6 times 10 is 60. So you get 60. Now don't forget x has to come along for the ride because he's also being multiplied as well. It's just we don't know what x is, so we can't do anything further. And the answer in this case is negative 60x. All right. Um, Notice really quickly, I'll tell you, when we learned how to add and subtract like terms before when, with, when we're doing addition uh, in the past, the terms that you're adding or subtracting have to match. They have to both have x's or something. They have to kind of represent the same thing when you're adding or subtracting. But that's not true with multiplying or dividing. Uh, multiplying and dividing, you just basically multiply the numbers or later on we'll be dividing the numbers. The variable just kind of comes along for the ride. So the rules are slightly different, but when doing a lot of problems, you will get the hang of it. So what if we had negative 5? times negative 5x. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, and these signs are both negative. Negative times negative gives you positive, so it's going to be positive 25. Don't forget the x, because he's still multiplied as well. All right, what if you had um, 4 times e in one set of parentheses, and in the next set you had negative 6f. E and f are just variables. They're totally unknown. You don't know what they are, so they just come along for the ride and the multiplication. What you do know is 4 times 6 is 24, and you have opposite signs, negative times uh, positive times negative, which means you're getting negative 24. But what do you have still? E times f. So e times f just kind of hangs out there uh, because they're still being multiplied. This is 4 times e. This is negative 6 times f, and everything's being multiplied. So in the end of the day, you multiply the numbers, but the variables remain multiplied just kind of hanging off at the end. That's how you handle that. All right, what if you had negative 3p times negative 4q? So again, you have two terms, both negative. So negative times negative, same signs, means you get a positive answer. 3 times 4 is 12, so you get positive 12 times p times q. And that's the final answer. What if you had negative 7a times negative 5c times 4. Now, don't forget that a and c are just variables. So we do the same thing. We have three kind of terms multiplied by one, uh, one another. So we handle the first two first, and then we'll deal with the other one later. So what do we have here? Negative 7a times negative 5z. Negative times negative gives you positive. 7 times 5 is 35, so you get positive 35 times a times c, because those variables are still there and then you still have to do the multiplication uh, times the 4. So here you have a positive 35, positive 4, so you're going to end up with a positive. What is 35 times 4? That's 140. You can use a calculator if, if you need to verify that or just do it by hand. But you have times A times C. That still stays there. Uh, there. All right, now what if you had, we just got a, a few more here. What if we have negative X times negative 3Y times negative z. Same sort of thing. We're going to work with the first terms first. So you have a negative times a negative, which means you have positive. Now, there's an implied 1 here, and here is a uh, number 3 there. So what you have is 1 times 3 is 3. It's going to be a positive 3 times x times y. You still have to multiply by negative z. Make sure you understand that. Basically, negative times negative gives you the positive. The 3, x, and y are all still multiplied together. Now. What do you have here? Positive times negative, which means you're going to have a negative answer. The only numbers that you have are 3, so it just comes along for the ride, times x times y times z. So the answer is negative 3 times x times y times z. All right, and what if we had uh, negative 9 times negative 5y minus 8? 
Okay, now this is a little bit different. Remember we learned about the distributive property before. So when you have a number, when you have a set of parentheses with kind of two terms inside, kind of joined with a, um, with a minus or a plus, and you have something sitting on the outside, this number needs to be distributed and multiplied here and also multiplied here. Right? That's what you have to, to do here. So let's write everything out and make sure that we're all on the same page. So what we really have here is negative 9 times negative 5y. Okay, then we have plus negative 9 times negative 8. Now, you can write it a bunch of different ways, but this negative 9 is multiplied by this term, so that's here. Now, this is really like a negative 8. You see, it's minus 8, but you can write that as negative 8 here. The negative 9 is here, and the, the plus we just use to join them together. So basically, you have this multiplied, the negative 9 times the negative 8 over here. And so what you end up with, the first terms, the negative times negative is positive. 9 times 5 is 45. And then you have the y. And then over here, you have uh, 9 times 8 is 72, but they're both negative, so it's going to be positive 72. So the answer is 45y plus 72. Now our final problem in this section is going to be negative bracket, open parentheses, negative 2 times a plus b. All right, so you have to go inside to outside, right? You have to, you have to go to the innermost set of parentheses and deal with that before you go outside, and that's from the order of operations. We've done that before. So inside of these brackets here, we have this number sitting outside of, of this term, this parentheses, which has two entries in here. So we have the negative 2 times this first item, and then plus negative 2 times this item. So to keep it all together the way you handle it. Now the negative sign on the outside here, you don't even mess with him yet, so let's just kind of write that and write the bracket here. We're not doing anything with that outside bracket at all. But negative 2 times a is negative 2a. Alright? And negative 2 times b is negative 2b. So you write that as minus 2b. And the reason is because negative times positive, here you have a negative times positive, you get a negative number. Negative times positive, you get a negative number. And so when you're writing it down, instead of writing plus negative, when you get a negative answer, you just write it as subtracting 2b. It's the same thing as adding a negative number. Now what we have is both of these guys with a bracket and the negative sign on the outside. So what's happening is the negative sign is being distributed in here and also distributed in here. Now what's going to happen when you take the negative of a negative? If you think about it, what you really have here is negative 1 on the outside. This negative 1 is being multiplied here, and the negative 1 is being multiplied here. So negative 1 times this is going to give you a positive 2, because negative times negative is positive 2a, and then you're going to have plus 2b. Make sure you understand that. And the answer is 2a plus 2b. So the negative gets distributed in here. Negative 1 times this, this makes it a positive 2a, because two negatives multiplied make it positive. This negative times this negative gives you positive 2b. So it's just following those rules that we outlined before, and as we get more and more practice, you'll get more and more comfortable with it. Believe me, these kinds of skills you'll be using all throughout algebra, so um, even if you're still a little bit rusty after these problems, you will get the hang of it as we solve more. Follow me on to the next lesson. We have a few more ideas to talk about when it comes to multiplying in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.